Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all those who are gathered here in the, in the sanctuary together. Uh, greetings to all those who are live streaming now or maybe joining us later via the web on, in this service today. We're so glad to have you with us. Am I loud? <laughs> okay. <laughs> People tell me that anyway, but yeah, there we go. I think that's a little better. Um, we do uh, <clears throat> welcome you again. If you're here for the first time, perhaps, or if you're a guest of ours, today you are fully welcome in this assembly, and that doesn't matter whether you're gathered here or whether you're online. The Spirit draws us together. The Spirit unites us. The Spirit binds us together, and we can give thanks for that because we are all called as Christ's disciples in this, in this place, as we'll hear that call in our gospel for today. Well, as we gather and begin worship, I invite you to rise as you're able, as we come before God with honesty and with our confessions. The sun of righteousness shall rise with beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Gracious God, we acknowledge that we are sinners and we confess our sins, those known to us that burden our hearts and those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin. Liberate us from the bondage of guilt. Work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. I should be seated. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them. Shall I send? 
we hear God's word in song, may the grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Why don't we come right over here today? Put this over here for just a minute. Go ahead. Come on, on up here. Perfect. Right there. Good. It's good. All right. And you guys can nice, be nice and spread out right out here, right down here. There you go. If you want to just sit right here, girls. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had some children up here for our children's sermon? <sighs> Any kids out there? Children's sermon? <sighs> like, has Pastor Bill lost his mind? Open your eyes, right? <laughs> We're right here, Pastor Bill. You know what? 
The reason I did that is it's not fun when someone doesn't see you, right? That's a horrible feeling. It's like maybe you go to school and your best friend, like, doesn't even see you, you know, doesn't even, you know, acknowledge you, just walks right past you and, not, you know, or something like that. What's that? Like you're invisible. That's right. How awful that would be if mom and dad, you woke up and they didn't even say hi, good morning. They just walked right on by. Or, you know, Pastor Bill doesn't see you when you're up for the children's room. What a horrible thing. That's horrible. But here's the reason I want to talk about that is something happens that's really cool in our gospel reading today. And actually, in our first reading, where we hear about Samuel being called, and then in the gospel reading, we're going to hear about Jesus calling his first disciples, saying, come, follow me, come and, he says, come and see. But what's really cool is that Jesus notices them. He sees them, and he sees a guy named Nathaniel standing under a fig tree, and he sees them. And that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. And what I really want you to know is that Jesus sees you. I love in the Psalms, it talks about God knowing every hair on our head. Maybe just know God always sees you and loves you. Okay? Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for these children. May they know that they are seen by you and that you love them so much. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. The first reading... The first reading from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and he lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, You shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. 
He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Psalms. Please read it responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips but you, O Lord. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am honestly made. Your works are wonderful. 
My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than of the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. It arise as you're able. Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, open our eyes that we who have come to see you today will encounter you in this season of Epiphany. In Jesus' name, amen. I see you. I love to play that hide-and-seek game with a little baby, you know, maybe a, a nine-month-old. I like to do it in restaurants, I confess, you know, when that, you're in the, uh, the booth behind and the parents are just, you know, trying to hold their little kiddo and I see you, you know. It's so fun. I remember doing it with my kids and just the delight in their eyes to, you know, be seen. Well, it's not only fun, but it's also really powerful to be seen. In the midst of Jesus' invitation to come and see and the disciples' invitation to us to come and see, well, you know what, let me just do a quick footnote here, because it's really not what I'm going to preach on today, but a lot of you guys struggle with evangelism, I've been told. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but I've, some, once in a while, I get that, 
feedback as a pastor, you know. Um, three words. Come and see. Come and see. And now in this wonderful digital age, it's as easy as clicking like. <laughs> Sorry, it appears we're having one of our amps go out, so it's coming in and out. So just those who are in-house know, know that's why we're getting some fluctuation. It's, it's not Lewis. It's <laughs> we're having something internally. But I'll talk loud, so you're going to be fine. So, um, you know, press like. Do a share. Do, you know, forward it on. It's, it's really easy. And in fact, if you don't know this, and I know a lot of us aren't necessarily digital na native generation, that if you, the more times you press like, the more times other people are going to see what we're putting out there and br bringing the gospel. If you didn't know that, you should know that. I mean, you just almost should never, unless you really don't like what Pastor Jonathan has to say or Pastor Bill has to say, that you don't press like. <laughs> so anyway, but really, that, that, that aside, it's so simple. Come and see. Come and see. It's an invitation. It's come and see. We don't twist arms here. We just tell people of the love of Jesus. Okay, that's the footnote. In the midst of that invitation, we hear an intriguing, fascinating thing happen to Nathaniel. Nathaniel starts out, well, pff, how can anything good come from Nazareth? I mean, Bethlehem's the place of where the king's going to be born, and Jerusalem's the center of everything. What are we talking about this guy from Nazareth? You want me to come to see somebody from Nazareth? Yeah, let's do that. But he goes from there to confessing Jesus as the Son of God. And although there's lots of ways to take that phrase, um, it's, like, it's e equal, really, to what Thomas says at the end of the Gospel of John, my Lord and my God, you are the King of Israel, you are the Messiah, you are the Son of God. So we go from, how can anything good come from, the, to you are the one. What made the difference? I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure you probably do, like me. You, you want to know because I, I struggle sometimes to hold on to that faith. I want to, with Nathaniel, say with all my might, you are the Son of God. It's so cool in our, our liturgy that after each sermon, you get a chance to stand up and confess your faith with other people. But sometimes, let's face it, we confess that faith with a little less gusto than other days because stuff happens. Life happens. I would like to know more about what happens <laughs> with Nathaniel and how he makes that movement. Well, there are many ideas about what happens for him. Jesus says, I saw you under the fig tree. Now, if you pull out a bunch of commentaries, you'll see a bunch of scholars say, talk about what it meant that Nathaniel was standing under a fig tree. There's some tradition that, you know, rabbis would study the law and the Torah under a fig tree, and that was a place of meditation and reflection. And so Jesus is saying, hey, I saw you, and actually it makes sense to some degree because we're told another confession about who Jesus is is that he's the one that the law and the prophets have been talking about for all these centuries. And so it makes sense. That could be it. But then there's others who say that if you look at some of the prophetic books at the end, there's some reference that sitting under your fig tree was awaiting the messianic age, awaiting God breaking in, you know. And that certainly makes sense. So maybe Jesus says to Nathaniel, I saw you while you were looking for the age to come. I saw you. Now Augustine, one of the great church fathers, um, 
connects some psalms and says that, you know, to be under the tree, he goes back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's like Nathaniel was confessing his sins, and so Jesus was hearing his confession and proclaims it. That might be a little bit more of a stretch, but there's lots of people, lots of things. What did it mean that Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree, and why, when Jesus said that, did that turn on the epiphany light bulb for Nathaniel? All of those are good possibilities, But, (laughs) my light bulb, my light bulb is that the focus isn't on the under the fig tree, but in when Jesus says, I saw you. I saw you. To be under the gaze of Jesus is an amazing thing. If we were to go on, we hear in the Gospel of John that Jesus saw a blind man born from birth. He saw, he saw a blind man, and then he gave him his sight. If we went on a little further, we'd see that Jesus saw Lazarus. The text says that. He saw him, and what did he do when he saw Lazarus? He raised him from the dead. (laughs) I want to tell you it's maybe the powerful thing that Nathaniel saw and when he looks in Jesus' eyes and he sees that Jesus sees him, the Word made flesh, God incarnate, that, I would like to contend, is what turned the light bulb on for him. To be the object of Jesus' verbs, <laughs> that he saw us, that he sees us. Good things happen when Jesus takes a look at you. Because it's a horrible thing to not be seen, isn't it? To be looked past. In our human nature, pretty much universally, human beings tend to see people who are in positions of power, people who have a lot of prestige, people who are beautiful, people who are talented, people who are important, people who are successful, people who are at the top of the ladder, I could go on and on. It seems like we are fixated, whether it be the 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 celebrity shows and magazines, we are fixated with the powerful and the prestigious. And yet, one of our postmodern contemporary challenges is that people are absolutely lonely and they absolutely feel overlooked. While we put our gaze on all the the powerful and the prestigious, so many people go about their lives feeling they don't matter, they don't count, no one sees them. Why the appeal of Christianity? In recent conversations with a lot of folks, I've run into some folks who go, why? Why would someone want to be a Christian? Look at how the church has been so involved in so many bad things throughout history. (laughs) I say, well, my first answer to that is that the church is made up of sinful people, and if you think that you're going to, you know, (laughs) not see some brokenness in the church, and especially when the church gets connected to empires and governments, it's going to get messed up. But I would like to flip the question. Why is it that so many people find Christianity so appealing who have been downtrodden? Isn't it one of the most beautiful ironies and ways God flips things that the evil, for instance, of slavery and racism in our country, that the very faith of some of those slave owners was given to those slaves, and they read the stories of the Bible. They read about how God delivers slaves out of slavery, and they become the most ardent confessors of the faith and lovers of Jesus. 
Because you see, Jesus sees people who are enslaved and beaten down and treated poorly. Jesus, that's the message of the Bible. He sees those folks right from the beginning. One of the things that attracted people to Christianity is that, wow, the church cares for orphans and widows. This is this is amazing what's going on. And they were blown away by the compassion and care of the early church. That in the sanctuary of the early church, there were people who were rich and poor. There were people who were powerful and not. And they were all brought into the same family, the same community. Jesus has a heart for the little ones. And we are called to see as God sees but I'm not just talking about economics or social stature. I'm talking about our neighbor here, our children, our grandchildren, who living in this world feel like they are overlooked and they don't matter and they don't count. You might say, well, how do you know God sees these people? Well, that's why Pastor Jonathan and I and Y. Silverdale Lutheran and the whole church universal is here on earth to proclaim this message of God in Christ. I see you. I see you. That's the story of the scriptures that is confirmed when Jesus was put to death and raised from the dead. So I know that there's some folks today sitting here, certainly watching from home, or in the parking lot that are struggling with anxiety today and depression. It's been amazing that most of the time I've run it, when I listen to people in those kinds of situations, they feel like they're the only one. They feel overlooked. I've got news for you today. Jesus sees you, and he knows you. And he calls you by name. I know for a fact that all of us have this, it's, it's those that have been a part of SLC in particular for a while, our hearts are just <clears throat> for our sister Terry in ICU today. And it's just, it's just right there. Jesus sees you and I, in our love, and our aching for our sister, and for our brother Randy. And we can go on for all the members of our community that are experiencing grief or hurt this day. Jesus sees us, and Jesus sees them. The promise that Terry rests in right now is that Jesus sees her, and that he is in her arms, and in her she is in his arms, and nothing will take her out of Jesus' hands and arms. You might be lonely. I know someone I talked to recently, they've gotten estranged from their family, from their kids. Something happened, you know, one of those horrible things, that misunderstandings and hurt feelings, and now their kids don't talk to them anymore. They talk about feeling overlooked. I see you. Now, I know some of you might be, if you're putting, you know, adding a few things together, and they say, wait a minute, if Jesus sees me, oh no. <laughs> Does that mean he sees what I did this week and left undone this week? Oh no. <laughs> Pastor Bill, you think you're telling me good news, but that's not good news. The one in whom, from whom no secrets are hid. But the good news that I get to tell you today, the gospel, is that Jesus, when he sees us, his word is, I love you more than words can say, and I forgive you all your sins. And like Lazarus, he raises us from the dead. Like the blind man, he gives us sight. Let me tell you, you want to be under Jesus' gaze. We want to be under Jesus' gaze. And then 
I think that's what made the difference for Nathaniel. I hope that makes the difference for you, that Jesus knows you. He knows what's in your heart. He knows your struggles, whatever you're worried about today. He knows everything about us, and he takes us into himself with all the love and grace that's, that's, that created all of the universe. He takes us right there, and he sees you. But then he says something to Nathaniel that just blows my mind. He says, oh, you believe because I saw you. You're going to see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. What is that about? It goes back to Jacob's ladder. It goes about to um, what I would say the vision means that Jesus as the Son of Man has become the locus of divine glory, the point of contact between heaven and earth. And the disciples are promised they're going to see it. They'll see it in all the signs of the Gospel of John. And they're going to see it in his death and resurrection. And guess what, folks? We have seen it. And we have come to know and be known by the one in whom heaven and earth come together. Let's just cling to that promise with all our might this day. Thanks be to God. Amen. The hymn of the day is, Will You Come and Follow Me? We will read in unison. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you and me? Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you and me. I invite you to rise as you're able as we confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole people of God, for all people everywhere, according to their need. Lord Jesus, we all seek to be truly understood, to be truly known. In your coming among us, you also see us for who we truly are and call us to follow you as we are. Give us strength also to see one another truly and to seek to follow you by finding you in our neighbors near and far. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, your world is under the constant threat of darkness. And at times we are overwhelmed by the illness and war and loss we see and experience in this life. Give us hope 
and help us to see and seek out the places where your light is breaking through. Fill us with your light so that we are strengthened to engage and connect with one another rather than turn away. Help us to be your disciples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, let your life-giving presence bring a blast of wind against those who seek to lift up white supremacy, who look to raise flags of oppression and genocide, who target public servants in our nation. Breathe life into those who continue to fight against COVID and give us all wisdom to support health care workers with our wise choices. Let your healing work through vaccines and innovative therapies. Give us compassion to work especially with hospitals in lower income areas overloaded with patients. Come Holy Spirit with wings of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, today we lift up Ray and Stephanie and the family of Kathy Schaefer as she died yesterday morning as they mourn her death, as they celebrate her life and come together as a family. Loving God, we lift up before you Jerry Gray as he recovers from kidney stone surgery, for Lisa Ottenbacher as she recovers from hand surgery, for Sue Bernhard as she recovers uh, from one procedure and now anticipates shoulder replacement, for Kathy Cloninger as she recovers from knee surgery. We continue to pray for Terry Randolph and Randy as well as Terry is in ICU in Tacoma. God, we pray for many in our congregation who are facing cancer, and we lift them up before you. Dave, Betty, John, Julie, Melanie, Jim, Elizabeth, Dave, Jim, Ron, and Carol. We also lift before you those who are deployed, especially those who have been deployed and deployed again, and whose families wait anxiously for them to come home. We pray for Brandon, Paul, Jillian, Bradley, Rebecca, Eric, Megan, Jared, Andrew, and David. There are many for whom we continue to pray and those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy and the love that you have shown us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share signs of peace with one another. And as if you are at home worshiping alone, you can breathe in that breath of peace from the Holy Spirit or uh, share peace with those you're gathered with today. Well, blessings again to you this day, to those of you who are gathered here, to those who are worshiping with us at home. Uh, we want to continue to stay connected. We've said from the beginning that we will not socially distance. We will physically distance, but we will actually try to up our game of being socially connected. And so um, up on the screen now for those at home and, and even for those here, you'll see a, a QR code for the Connect card. Um, and we'd like for you to let us know if you have a prayer concern or um, a change in anything that's going on or just want to let us know how you're doing. We do ask also that members of SLC, just like we used to pass those friendship booklets, please begin using this card uh, at home to let us know if you've worshipped with us today. And uh, again, to let us know how you're doing, share prayer concerns, or just let us know if you'd like a pastoral call. Another great way to connect with our ministry is to download our SLC Church app. It really has an awful lot there, and we're continuing to populate that with um, material, so it's kind of one-stop shopping for anything from a Bible study maybe that you missed to giving to uh, devotion uh, to whatever it might be, and you can kind of connect in one spot there. 
At this time, we want to um, install our church council, and so we uh, videoed that during our council meeting and want to share that with you both here and at home now. Well, we are excited to install our 2021 church council in this uh, Zoom format. The following people have been elected uh, by SLC to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of the gospel. And we rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. I'm going to invite them to introduce themselves now. My name is Kurt Thompson, and I'm the Youth Ministry Council member. My name is Carissa Rabadou, and I am the Fellowship Council member. My name is Joe Shaker, and I'm the Worship and Music Council member. My name is Scott Krasnick. I am the Stewardship Council member. My name is Katie Shaw, and I'm the Social Concerns Council member. My name is Julie Enabo, and I'm the Council Secretary. I am Mark Bargy, and I am the treasurer for SLC. I'm David Sweeney, president. I'm Craig Miller, the property and grounds. I'm Denise Hammersbach, and I'm the vice president. All right. Well, let us hear from God's word this night, this day, as we hear from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation as members of SLC's church council. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, in learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. So in the loveliness of Zoom technology, um, it looks like we lost our council member of Christian education, Carmen Meher, again, this is, and Carmen served the term already and, and is serving again, and we're delighted to have her and installing her in this event as well. Um, so on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, I will and I ask, ask God, God to help, help me and guide me. People of God, congregation, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, will. and we ask we God to help us. And we help ask us. God to help us. Yes. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation and executive officers of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct you, your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ and let the people say, Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. If you didn't catch what Pastor Bill said, Carmen Meherg was having some internet problems, but she's installed down there in the bottom as well. Well, as they've offered their gifts to us, this is the time in worship where we, as part of our response to all the gifts that God has given, all the blessings of God, we respond with our treasures as well. While we will not again pass an offering plate here in worship, you can drop your offering physically 
in the back. You can use the church app, of course, to give electronically. Visit our website, or there's a QR code there for those at home worshiping to scan as well. But in thanks for those gifts returned to God, we now receive God's word in song and in our prayers as well. God of light, we, we praise, praise you, you for your, your constant, constant care, care and give thanks, thanks that, that you have claimed us as, as your own people. people. Thank you for drawing us to this place where your word is revealed and our, and our lives are connected. connected. Bless these tithes and offerings as they are joyfully returned to you. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is indeed right. It is our duty, it is our joy that we should all, at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed by those whom, the very ones whom he called today, in that night he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God's gifts are ready for you, God's people. We invite you to share uh, communion with one another at home here in the worship space. There will be three baskets. There's one gluten-free, there's one with the bread and the juice, and there's one with uh, bread and wine. We'll hand it to you with the bread on top, and you can peel that part off and take the bread and then turn it over and the juice or wine is on the, on the bottom. I do want to also note that there'll be some baskets. We'll put a few baskets around next to... No? No, I've got them. I've got some back here. <laughs> uh, we'll put some baskets out here, and, and you can, if you come to the altar rail or wherever that might be, you can deposit the, the leftovers of that into those baskets. All right. I invite you to be seated and to come forward as you're invited.
I have a whole sermon on how I didn't want to go to church anymore, even as a pastor one time. So <laughs> somebody in the choir helped me out, but that's an Easter sermon for another time. I invite you to rise as you're able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may live in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who sees us and surrounds us and lives in us, bless you now and forever. Amen. On our way rejoicing, gladly let us go. Christ our Lord has conquered, vanquishes the grace-filled. Go in peace. Know that you are seen. Share the good news.